Right. Could we grab you? Sure. Terrific. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yours. I want, don't worry. I want you. Oh, thank you. Yes, I do. Oh, no. oh. Say that on the air. <laughs> Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Avi Myers here for the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of the Northtown Community Council. And we are 250 feet under the ground. Well, actually, not quite covered under the ground. But uh, 20, 250 feet. We're here with Water Reclamation President Terry O'Brien. Terry, how you doing? Hi, very good. Thanks for coming out today. First of all, my pleasure. Thank you. And at some point, uh, starting uh, actually when the show airs, this will have just become operational. We could be standing what 90 feet underwater. Yes, it'll be uh, in use uh, by January 2nd. And um, what will happen is uh, we're right now 250, 250 feet below grade. And uh, this particular reservoir, we're standing right in the middle of it, will fill to about 90 feet. 90 feet. And 90 feet equals how many gallons? 3 billion gallons of uh, stormwater will be filling us. 3 billion gallons of stormwater. And behind us is what, a 24 million pound plug? Yes, uh, <laughs> 24 million pounds of uh, concrete were used to uh, plug off a hole which leads to another portion of this quarry operation. Now, is there a little handle like on my bathtub where I can just pop it up and the water flows out? Or? No, I don't think so. I, mean, I think that's uh, pretty uh, tightly sealed. I don't want to flood anybody else out on the property here. Uh, I wouldn't think so. Anyway, uh, stick around because you're going to see some fascinating sights. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And thanks to my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch, on this edition of the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. This thing was poured in 20-foot lifts, and it had a groove in the, in the side, on each side, and then the, uh, the center wall was precast on top, and then lowered into, into place, and then grouted in place. How long was something like this last? Will this last 100 years, 200 years? A absolutely. Yeah. yeah, every bit of that. I, I would hate to have to reconstruct it out here. Well, the only thing that would change it would be would be hydrogen sulfide damage, and uh, these are really well ventilated, so there, 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 should, there, there shouldn't be that. There shouldn't be any incidents of that. District's pretty good at uh, designing this stuff. This is about, uh, I think, about 250 foot that we're going down right now. Wow. And, uh, and then it drops another 50 foot into the deep tunnel system. The entry point of the water at the at the uh, diversion structure where we're going next is about 300 foot deep, almost, and uh, then it flows downhill to the eight footer that comes into this. But the topography is a little bit different. Uh. Yeah, it was just nice and smooth. I'll say that. Oh yeah. Well, every bit of it's been built. Everybody rides cranes uh, up and down. They're uh, they're all they're all hydraulic and uh, positive control. It's a bit warmer down here. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is that eight foot tunnel. Can you shine your light there? That eight foot tunnel comes in. Like, looks like a fish hook going over to our job. Comes into this little chamber here, and then it, and then the water will flow through these two 42-inch pipes. And then there's the additional piping, uh, uh, two pairs of, of uh, gate valves, or they call them knife valves, to, that they can isolate the middle. And then in the middle is a big cone valve, which will be operated hydraulically from the plant over. Well, actually from 130th and. 
and uh, and the expressway. Are they yeah. from the expressway? Yes. Uh, the Calumet Treatment Plant has a big brain center over there, and it and it runs everything. And so it'll say how high the water is in the creek, how high the water is in the in the quarry, how high the water is in the deep tunnel. Here's where it will come in. This will raise to about 14 foot in height, and then it will uh, open up and come in, drop in here, fall down a diversion structure, and this, then this will flow into the, the quarry. This is a natural creek, or? Yes. But you guys are using it uh, to rise up 14 feet? Normally what happens during a rain event, it will yeah. surcharge to about 14 feet in height. And it'll cause a lot, a lot of flooding, over the bank flooding for the area. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just be taking the water off this and storing it in the reservoir yeah. until the rain subsides and the creek lowers. Then what we'll do is pump that water back to our treatment plant at Calumet, yeah. treat it, and put it back into the streams 14, during dry weather periods. Feet is a lot. Yeah. That's a real lot. We had, uh, you, we got pretty high once this year already, didn't we, Glenn? 22 feet. Oh, I see. That's up to 22. Wow. And and that constitutes a 100-year flood, 22? Yeah. yeah. Uh, once in 100 years, uh, which nowadays we probably get uh, every year. A couple, <laughs> couple, couple times a year. The, uh, the, the big tip, uh, 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 pipes that you see there are to stop trees large or, or large debris from getting into the system. And then, and then you've got a bar screen rake here at the face, uh, which is on six inch centers, and that stops the smaller debris from getting into the system. When, when that water gets up to 22, you can see it, it fills this entire area. It looks like a lake in here. It's serious. And, and how high, how far, it must go way. Oh, way. Uh, the, the whole, this whole forest preserve is a floodplain. Wow. And, and so it becomes a lake. And actually, it's low enough in this area where they don't get flooding in this area, but downstream, it floods everything. Houses, are, basements are full and everything, and this, this is supposed to alleviate that. When they open these gates, if that water were at 22, this will lower that water down to 16. Wow. It'll lower it six feet, which you can see the difference just looking out here. Uh, and 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 it'll store three billion gallons in that in the in the reservoir that we're going to go to next. There's three of these gates. The gates are down down there. If you can look down here, you can see almost see the light on the face of them. Yeah. And these these stems go all the way down there. This this actuator takes the threads on here and sc screws this up, and then they end up going the the stem goes up into that. St stem cover. I doubt that they'll ever open these gates full uh, because they don't really want they don't really want to take that much water in at a time. They'll try to meter them with the gates. Yeah. And uh, gives them an option for the future though if they need to or Oh, absolutely. Well, they they've got it so they can do whatever they want to do with yeah. this thing. That's it's uh, it's really well designed. This, they're just putting in the electrical form. They can get down to work on these gates through each one of these bays with these ladders. Yeah. And then they can find it into the connecting tunnel, which goes out this way uh, via doorways in, in, into that. They've got a temporary uh, power, uh, in case they have a power failure, there's a gas-operated generator here. And, and in the event of a power failure, they'll have a secondary power source uh, by running this generator, and that'll happen automatically. And then this is duplicated three times. That's gasoline or natural gas? Natural gas. And in fact, uh, initially, and, they st and they'll always have the option, because it's got two inlets on it, where they can use propane in the event that there's uh, the gas shortage. So they think about pretty much everything. I will. This year, the rock was so bad here where we had a tunnel in 
we ended up having to build a, a bridge across the top because the, walk, the rock does flake off of the walls and they didn't want to have the ability to, to have this thing dammed up. So it was an extra charge, but uh, those are 70 foot precast beams that, that we had to give them the ample room for where, the, where it would fill up. And last but not least, we're going to fill this up. And then we've got a drain hole over here that's draining this quarry right now. That'll be filled up and then one up by the plug. The rock was bad in here, so they, we had to put these ribs in to hold it up and then shotcrete the ribs so that they wouldn't deteriorate. This is just the rock as you see it that's bored here. You see, notice all the layers. This, this was the uh, bottom of an ocean uh, millions of years ago and the chemical action and the height of the water created the limestone. All of our tunnels, uh, we put a, a foot of reinforced concrete in there. Yeah. Um, we didn't do it with this one because this is only going to be used temporarily. I don't know if you noticed, but you see these bolts up in the top. Those are high strength, eight foot long bolts that are drilled and placed as they go along with the, uh, with the tunnel boring machine immediately behind it. And then they're tensioned and uh, they've got uh, uh, epoxy resin throughout the eight foot of drill hole and it knits all of these layers together so that so that they don't want to air slack and try to start cracking and falling off. In areas where they're real close, then they would have us put these, these, uh, these straps in place. And then farther up the tunnel, on the last 1,500 feet or so, we had to, uh, we had to shock treat it after we were done because there was so much fallout. It was bad, the worst rock on the project. I think the best production we had on this tunnel in a 24-hour period was a, was a 100-foot day or like that, 120. And the worst was zero. <laughs> we had a few of them. 120, how much in a day? 120 feet. You did wow. Well, on, on those 30, 35-footers that, that uh, Terry was just telling you about, uh, they've had productions up to... Uh, 260 feet a, a day, 24 hours. They, I think they made a world record on that, on Torrance. I, I think that was 5,000 feet in a month. Wow. This whole thing's only 7,000 feet. And, uh, and it took us, a, do you remember how many months? I should know it, and I did know it one time. Um, was it six or three? Three months, yeah. It was three months around the clock to build this thing. In, in, in this tunnel, 7,000 feet, how much water actually is, would be just in the tunnel? You mean to store? Yeah. Oh, not a lot. Uh, not not very much at all compared to the other. I'd have to run the numbers for you, but I don't have it in my head. Do you know that, John? It's not on capacity. Right now, with the 93 miles completed, probably yeah. about 1.5 billion gallons can be stored. But that's all 30 foot and, and, yeah, and, and, and 35, 32, 35 foot diameter tunnels. Yeah. So the 100, not, what is it, 110 miles, Terry? 100, or? Uh, 109. 109. Be the total. Yeah. And it's nothing compared to the quarries. No. Wow. I mean, it, the tunnel basically is the pollution control aspect of the program. The reservoirs are going to be the stormwater portion yeah, of it. They call this program TARP. And that's yep. tunnel and reservoir project, and uh, and there, there there's a reservoir on the O'Hare system up near 90. But this this uh, this one here, when they get it done, will be actually the first reservoir of the TARP program. Because there's four uh, four legs of this thing. You got the O'Hare system, you got the displays and mainstream, which will all flow to McCook, and then you got the Calumet, which all flows here. Is the O'Hare finished? Yeah, O'Hare is totally completed. Virtually, uh, we've realized.
realized the benefits to the cost that we paid for constructing it, $45 million it took us to construct that reservoir, and to this day we've already uh, received benefits in the $45 million range for prevention of uh, yeah. flooded yeah. basements and businesses. This, uh, this tunnel, you see the, the vertical seams are called joints, the horizontal seams are called bedding planes, and when we mined this, we were making considerable uh, water. And then part of the contract is to go in and grout those seams to stop water infiltration. And I think we're down now to uh, where the system's making about 100 gallons a minute. This has a, this has a grading of about feet from on both ends, and then the eight footer goes down about another uh, three or four foot. So there's a total gradient of about eight foot, but that encourages the water to flow on its own volition. Using nature and gravity to, to use nature and gravity to get things back. Yeah. 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 Like a bubble met, we're about 200 feet below ground. Yeah. When it gets down all the way to McCook, we're like 350 below ground. Yeah. So you got a, you got almost 100 feet. You're going down from uh, the top of the tunnel system on the main stream by uh, the Baha'i Temple. Yeah. It flows all the way down underneath the North Shore Channel, Chicago River, through the loop, out under the Sanitarian Ship Canal to McCook. And you get down to 350 to the actual pump station. So, elevation. It's all gravity. How much is this whole project looking at when you're finished? When uh, totally completed, about $3 billion. $3 billion. Yeah, the English and the French, before they constructed the tunnel, came over here to yeah. see how we were doing it and used the same technology. Um, they built three 33-mile tunnels to the tune of $15 billion. So, 99 miles a tunnel for them, basically. What you've seen is right at a 50 million. 50 million. Seems like it would be more to tell you the truth. Not that I have any concept of these kind of terms. Well, the one, that, the other one they're working on now is about 160 million. 168. 168 million dollars. No. That's what eight miles tunnel. We're going to get off the truck because we can't. he can't really go any further. Uh, we're right at the jump, the eight-foot tunnel. You'll see this is our, this is the lowest point of the tunnel. And uh, when we evacuate here, then this thing will fill up and drain back out to the quarry or to the other side. And now, introducing our team, for the Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. First, we have the president of the Water Reclamation District, Terry O'Brien. <laughs> and now, the project manager for the Deep Tunnel Project, Glenn Morrison. And now, the project manager for the Deep Tunnel, Greg Hauser. And now, the resident engineer of the Deep Tunnel Project, John Lemon. And the political expert of the Northtown Community Council, representing the taxpayers of Cook County, Jim Nelly. And I'm your host, Avi Myers. And on camera, Sonny Hirsch. When we, when we were on the other end in the valve shaft, the first place we went, the little 242-inch pipes, they were hooked up to this tunnel here. And this tunnel goes like like a big fish hook and goes over to that valve shaft. How long is this? This is 3,000 feet long. Walk now about uh, about 3,000 feet, uh, 3,500 feet to the far end, and that'll be where we look down those two shafts that they were pouring. Right over your head, Come over here. Right here, right here is where 
to shot treat uh, for just the once the little second. This this was uh, th this thing had holes that were five feet deep up in the top and was all, all bolted and strapped. And this was just a little isolated section. We're going to walk some more tunnel that was that's uh, just the Virgin Rock, and then we've got a. 1,300 foot of this type of, uh, of uh, re rehab on that other sewer, uh, on, on 1,300 feet, almost all the way up to the drop shaft. Uh, the rock got really bad up there. Uh, we didn't have any problem mining it, but the, uh, the district was afraid that with the erosion of the water going in and out that it, that it, that it might create some problems down here and uh, and uh, required that we uh, shot treat the top of it. It's a beautiful job, you'll see it. You can't hardly tell the difference except you won't see the bolts in the section where it's shot treated. Uh, this is where they first started and then you'll see it going on all the way down to the, to the end. Uh, this is the beginning of the shot treat again. And what there is there is on every five foot there's there's those like those ribs, the channel ribs that you see there. They go all the way from spring line to spring line for this entire distance, and then there's some mesh between them, and you you can almost see the pattern of the mesh up there where the where the shot creed kind of shows those little squares, and and then there's four inches of shot creed below the the uh, the original cut, but in many cases, as I mentioned before, there's five three foot holes, some of them very long, uh, and that was the reason for putting the shock feet in here. This whole distance all the way down to the other end is, is shock feeded now. Yeah, it's too bad they couldn't let us down, but this, this chamber is pretty neat. This was all blasted out where we're going right now. Behind all of these walls, there is about a five foot grid that looks like tic-tac-toe. The entire wall area of this and that 60-foot diameter shaft, and they all drain to these to these inlets. And the, the purpose of that is that these walls are only about well, they're from three to eight foot thick. But if you ended up with several hundred foot ahead on this thing, it exfiltrates out there. Then you dewater it, and you'd have all that head pressure on there, and you just You'd, you'd, you'd fracture the concrete. Those things will automatically flow at certain points on their own? It's, it's uh, called a duck bill valve. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a reinforced uh, uh, hose yeah. that's squashed, and, uh, and then the pressure outside opens them, and then they close back so that you don't exfiltrate through them. Right. And there, you can see them all along here and out in the, in the 60 foot shaft. This thing is about. Uh, all oh, say 70, 70 some feet high. It was poured in these lifts that you can see the, there was four lifts and they, they, uh, they had them 40 foot long uh, form on each side and they'd pour one side every other day. So they, they ended up making a pour every day in this thing. Then we had, a, had some stanchions sitting on the side of the wall and a, and a rail that went across the top, had a form up there uh, with a platform across that rolled on out and poured 20 foot of that at each pour. Then it goes out here and enters into this 60 foot diameter shaft. And then there's a work deck there where it now cones into the 24 foot diameter shaft that we saw at the top. All of this was done out of, out of cages like this. There was no scaffolding used down here. Wow. Right here is where they were pouring that uh, that 10 foot air shaft. It looks like they lost a little concrete. That's 60 feet high? Oh, uh, I would say it's probably closer to, to, to 70 or 80. Wow. And these, these are uh, shoring towers that they use on bridge work. Yeah. And uh, it's set up there. And then there's a, a rolled beam around the outside. That's a 60-foot diameter shaft. And, uh, and then they put joists there and made a work deck. Then put the forms in there to build the cone. 
and then just left all of it there and then they'll strip it on, on, on the way down. Clean up the bottom and she'll be ready for action. You can see the same weep holes around uh, the 60 footer that you have out here for the same purpose. Hi, Abby Myers here for the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of the Northtown Community Council. Join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m., Friday at 2.30 p.m. on Channel 19 in Chicago. Join us on Channel 6, Thursday at 8 o'clock in Evanston, and odd-numbered Mondays on Channels 19 or 35 in 24 North and Northwest suburbs. And it is my pleasure to introduce our host for the Deep Tunnel event we're going to be undergoing today and maybe on future shows, the president of the Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, Terry O'Brien. Hi, Avi. Welcome. First of all, thank you very much. We're, what, 300 feet underground? Uh, 300 feet underground, and I know it took us four years to get down here, but uh, uh, I hope your viewing audience will see what we've been doing underground throughout Cook County for the last 30 years. All right. Just so people know, um, your project manager, Glenn Rorison, was telling us that this is actually 22 feet 2 inches wide. Yeah, the tunnel we've been walking through today is a 22 foot in diameter tunnel. Uh, we have tunnels as large as 35 feet in diameter, and that's on other segments of the completed portion of this program. Which people really should stick around and look forward to seeing. This is a once in a lifetime shot. There aren't too many things that can get me to go 300 feet underground in a place where your refuse will, once, will flow at some point. Well, the combined sewer will flow, uh, sewer water will flow into these tunnels. This particular tunnel, though, we're in today will be strictly for stormwater. Uh, for off the Little Calumet River Basin down in the southeast side of the, of the county. And uh, it, when this thing is fully built up, we're talking about it filling? To uh, approximately 4 billion gallons in capacity. Once a tunnel fills, it will flow to the reservoir, which you have footage of. Uh, that reservoir will have capacity of 3 billion plus about a you know, little less than a billion gallons out of this particular tunnel into that reservoir. That's pretty impressive. We also want to thank uh, Greg Hauser and John Lemon who joined us today and, and have helped us uh, learn what's going on down here and how it was built and how things were put together and uh, what the uses are going to be. Yeah, they're getting down to the final uh, portion of completion of this particular segment of the tunnel. And this can go online right after the first of the year. So it will be uh, of use to uh, the residents of this region to protect them from over the bank flooding from the Little Calumet River Basin as well as Thorn Creek. So we actually, now that I think about it, this, this is airing initially January 2nd. So this will actually be about right when it's starting. Yeah, January 2nd, it will be used. Then. So it sounds good. So everybody flush away and know that where we're standing, it's going to go. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be full. <laughs> we won't be under it either. <laughs> no, not at all. And I want to thank you very much, uh, Terry O'Brien. I want to thank my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. And we're going to take you all over the deep tunnel, courtesy of President Terry O'Brien of the Water Reclamation District, and enjoy the tour. Navi, thanks again for coming down here today. It means a lot to our agency so that people can see while we're spending the tax dollars to prevent basement flooding and pollution in the inland waterways as well as protecting Lake Michigan, which is our drinking water supply. And I appreciate you coming down today and, and taking the footage so that you can show the, the listeners and the viewers of your program what we're doing with their tax dollars. Well, I want to thank you also for having us down here. This is really, in a, there aren't too many people who can claim they're spending a day 300 feet underground. And we're down in one of the last segments, so there's not many people that have been through this system. You're one of the few lucky ones that have been able to come down here and view it firsthand. And as I said, this is, to the, this is the second to the last portion of the, the tunnel, portion of the project. Well, stick around, gang, because you're going to really enjoy this. Thanks so much, Jerry. Thank you, Avi. Thanks for coming.